Hi LEGO fans, I'm a little behind the eight ball on this one, but I said I was going to review every Ninjago movie set, and today I am going to finally review Destiny's Bounty. I've had a number of requests to review this set, most of them coming from a very persistent friend of the channel, Dylan Chang. So finally I'm going to make good on my promise, and today I'm going to be unboxing, speed building, and reviewing Set number 70618, Destiny's Bounty from the Ninjago movie. This is an amazing looking set with 2,295 pieces and I've been looking forward to building this for a long time. It features Wu's Ninja training base, the Destiny's Bounty built on three modular levels. And that 2,300 piece part count includes an impressive roster of seven ninja minifigures. We've got Kai, Jay, Zane, Nia, Cole, Lloyd and of course Master Wu. Flipping over to the back of the box, you can see more of the detail in this impressive set. You might also notice that this box is a little banged up. That's probably because it's been on the shelf of Toys R Us for way too long. Like most people, I'm very sad that Toys R Us is closing, but it did give me the opportunity to buy this set at a 30% discount. This set usually retails for $160, but I was able to pick it up for $112, which is pretty good value for a 2300 piece set. I suspect this set has a lot more detail to offer than the box suggests, but there are a few things that Lego have called out on the box art. The roof of the ship is clad in a retractable awning and I really like the use of shuttering elements here. There's a training area inside the ship and somewhere for Master Wu to catch up on his sleep. This is a modular build and you can remove sections of the ship to get to the cabins inside. It looks like the ship has portholes and Zane is getting quite the surprise from some invading sea life. Destiny's Bounty also features wind up and release anchors and we get a sense for how much display space we're going to have to free up for this new addition to the collection. Destiny's Bounty is almost 2 feet long and 17 inches high. I can't believe it's taken me so long to get around to reviewing this set and I'm super excited to get this built. So let's get this box open and see what we've got inside. Here's everything that came inside the box. We've got 15 numbered bags of Lego elements, a satisfyingly thick 310 page instruction manual, two unnumbered bags of Lego containing hull elements and other specialized pieces, a protective package containing the ship's sails, and of course we've got the dreaded sticker sheet. I'm going to go ahead and build the Destiny's Bounty, and today this is going to be a 90 second speed build. And here's the completed Destiny's Bounty. I've waited a long time to build this and let me tell you I'm not disappointed. As Ninjago sets go, this is a pretty big one. With a part count of 2,295 pieces, this is going to take you a few hours to put together. My son and I took it in turns on this build and we got this done in about 3 hours and 30 minutes. But the actual model itself, whilst very impressive, doesn't take up too much room to display, which is really nice. LEGO has always been very good at making models of ships. There's a long lineup of ships that have come and gone. I guess you could say those ships have sailed, but in my opinion this one is easily as good as any one of the past ships that I've seen. Destiny's Bounty is 21 inches long and 17 inches high, which means those 2300 pieces have been packed into quite a small footprint. That's great because it's not too difficult to display, and also great because we get loads and loads of 
cool details. We're going to take a look at all of the exterior detail and then work our way through the interior of the Destiny's Bounty. And finally, we're going to take a look at all of those minifigures, including your favourites Kai, Jay, Zane, Nia, Cole, Lloyd and of course Master Wu. Starting at the top we've got three magnificent custom printed fabric sails. The first two carry this magnificent dragon motif and I love the way this continues from one sail to another. And the third has a logo you might recognise. That's the same logo you see on the back of Master Wu's Spinjitzu uniform. And way up at the top the Destiny's Bounty is flying a flag complete with a dragon motif. Speaking of dragons, at the front of the ship we've got a pair of oriental dragon heads. These come complete with opening mouths and some really cool features. Lego studs are used to great effect to replicate the nostrils at the front of the head. And on each side we've got gold elements making up the facial features of the dragon. We've got swirly pieces for the dragon's whiskers, a golden banana for the eyebrows and golden horns for the dragon's horns. There are a couple of white teeth and a muffin element for the dragon's eye. That is so cool. Taking a step back you can see some of the brickwork used to create the hull of the ship. There are very few studs on display here and that makes for a really nice smooth exterior. We also get some really nice arch pieces supporting the front of the ship with those large heavy dragon heads. On both sides of the ship we've got bolsters to protect it from the dock walls when it's moored in the harbour. And we also have a pair of large anchors for when the Destiny's Bounty needs to moor in the harbour and not dockside. Both anchors can be released or drawn up at the same time using a mechanism in the middle of the deck. Running along the entire length of the ship is a decorative siding consisting of red and brown tiles and silver studs. It hugs the contours of the ship really well because it's a multi-jointed segmented piece with six points of articulation. You might also notice that it's not bolted directly to the side of the ship and it flares out along the length. That's because at the back of the ship we've got this ball joint here and you'll see I can use this to fine tune the curvature of the outer rail. The same applies at the front of the ship, there's another ball joint here and this simply clips into the side rail like so and that's how we managed to get such a really neat effect. Another really cool feature on the lower level of this ship are these rotating fins. That's as far as they go down and then we can bring them back up. Now I'm no expert on Ninjago, I don't watch the cartoons like I know a lot of you guys do, but I have heard that Destiny's Bounty can fly and I'm pretty sure that wing is part of the mechanism which helps it take to the air. Even though this is a very utilitarian part of the ship, we've still got some nice decorative features including those silver studs and a super nice gold coloured oriental style hat. Here's a view of Destiny's Bounty from behind and I put Lloyd in shot just to give you a sense of scale. This part of the ship is probably six or seven times as high as a minifigure and then the same again for the sails. In case there was any doubt about the name of the ship it's printed on the back here in both English and what I presume are Japanese symbols. And clearly when I say printed I mean stickered pieces which are a pain to apply. There is of course a rudder for steering and while this looks very functional it's purely decoration. There's a really nice balcony at the back of the ship complete with telescope. This seems to be immediately outside the dojo room which we'll cover later but I can't see that there's any way to actually get to the balcony. There's no door here and there's no walkway along the side of the ship to actually get to this. Other than that it's really cool. And then we've got the top level complete with lanterns, a really nice golden window and a pair of pipes which give this quite a steampunk vibe. Although I guess in reality these are probably just here to vent fumes from a wood burning stove. I guess we'll find out when we poke around inside. And finally at the back of the ship we've got a white banner complete with red Japanese symbols that I'm not smart enough to read. I tried using Google Translate but that isn't having any of it either. So if you know what this says and you want to look really smart then feel free to say so in the comments below. Up on the main deck we've got a veritable cornucopia of stuff and not a pirate in sight. There's a string of Japanese lanterns and banners hanging between the two main masts. As a British guy I can definitely identify with Master Wu's love of tea and it's great to see a teapot and cup out on the deck. There are also some crates we need to take a look inside. This one contains a couple of silver fish which are hopefully dried as there's no ice to keep them fresh. Not all of the fish we see on the Destiny's Bounty are silver. In this one we've actually got a goldfish which I don't think I've ever seen before in a Ninjago set and it definitely makes a change from all those blue fish we get with the shark army characters. Finally for the crates stored on the main deck we've got this one which seems to contain two brown tiles. These are actually stickered pieces and contain, I don't know what these are, these are either playing cards or they're not going to be mahjong symbols. Maybe Master Wu's got a sideline making trading cards but either way these are rather nice. 
as well as all the crates we have this little barrel and if we give that a shake you'll hear that there's something inside so let's pop that open and see what we've got and I think this might be contraband we've actually got something that looks like a can of cola really nice printed lid there and uh, yeah I'm not sure this would pass by Master Wu's list of necessary supplies so this may be contraband hidden by one of the ninjas also on deck we've got tools to keep everything ship shape and a wide variety of greenery. As well as these plants we've got a large decorative potted specimen and some more plants being grown on the other side. It's difficult to say whether these are purely decorative or if the gang are planting vegetables. But there's definitely some fishing going on so there's a good chance they're subsidising their own food supply. Not that Lego minifigures eat food but you get the picture. Our young band of ninjas are always prepared and at the front of the ship we've got two hidden compartments containing weaponry and some very nice weaponry they have too. We've got two golden sais and two golden katanas. Destiny's bounty is certainly well lit, as well as the lanterns we've got hanging between the masts. We've also got lanterns on each side of the boat. There's even a lantern lighting up the entrance to the dojo, which we're gonna come back to shortly. You may have noticed that grey grate in the middle and that reveals the hidden area in the middle of the deck. This is not always easy to get into, but I'm gonna give it a go. This reveals a weapon storage room deep within the bowels of the ship. We've got all kinds of dangerous looking weapons down here, including golden ninja throwing stars and that larger three pointed thing with horns. If you know what it's called, feel free to say so in the comments. On the opposite wall, we've got much more mundane things. We've got a hand washing basin with golden faucet. And then is that what I think it is? Yes, even ninjas have to go to the bathroom, but thankfully for Lloyd, he's got a plentiful supply of bathroom tissue. And when Lloyd has finished answering the call of nature, there's a ladder to help him climb out of the bowels of the ship. This part of the ship extends much further back and we'll show you what's inside the rear portion of this deepest level very soon. You might have noticed I've removed the sails and that just makes it a little bit easier for us to explore the modular elements at the back of the ship. There are three levels here and we're going to start with the bridge. Like the lower levels of the ship we've got a profusion of greenery here but the thing that really caught my imagination is the bamboo style roof. The roof panels are made up from flexible shutters which you might be more familiar with from things like Lego City fire stations where we have to roll up the door. These are very flexible and give us a really nice curved finish. Those are also pretty easy to remove which gives us an opportunity to have a poke around inside the bridge. Up at the front we've got the ship's wheel where Master Wu is ably controlling the Destiny's bounty. To help steer the gang in the right direction we've got a ship's compass, golden telescope and a map which joy of joys is a printed piece. We've also got every mariner's best friend, the sextant. And you might notice we've got more greenery with different varieties of plants. You may remember from earlier that we've got a pair of pipes coming out of this room. I was expecting to see something like a wood-burning stove inside. But when you look deep inside the bridge, there's absolutely nothing there that would require these pipes. There's no wood-burning stove, there's no engine, and there's nothing else that I can see that would need those pipes. So I'm going to have to conclude that those are there for decorative purposes only. With the roof replaced, it's time to go down to the next level. We've got the dojo on the next floor, and getting to that should be relatively easy. In fact, you can remove the entire dojo level from the ship which makes life easier for me to film. On each side of the dojo we've got these decorative blinds complete with bamboo designs. Those are stickered pieces which is a shame but it is a really nice design. There's a large opening so the guys can enter and leave easily, a dojo banner hanging outside the door and a ladder to get up to the bridge. Inside there's a decorative scroll showing Wu's symbol and more words that I can't read. On the right hand wall we've got a training dummy complete with a pair of katanas. And on the left hand side we've got a crossbow and what I'm sure is a barrel of age appropriate training tools. The floor of the dojo is quite decorative but also very practical. We've got six studs on the floor, one for each of the six ninjas. Finally with the bridge and the dojo removed from the ship we can peer into the very lowest level. This is Master Wu's chambers and there's the man himself in bed catching 40 winks. Usually when we get a Lego bed it's something that a minifigure can sleep on top of. So it's really cool to get something that Master Wu can actually sleep inside. The bed can also easily be removed from inside the ship. So whilst this bed doesn't look very comfortable, it does look very effective. What we've got here is a quilt or duvet or eider down, which is on a hinged piece and that kind of sits over the top of Master Wu, which looks pretty good from above, not so much from the side. When we open this up, you can see inside we've got a piece at the bottom there, which is a little bit like the pieces they use in Lego Friends, so you can get the mini dolls to stay in place in vehicles. And that does quite an effective job of keeping Master Wu in bed. He's also got a pillow, which is perfectly contained 
Shield to allow him to kind of sit up right in bed. And then we simply close that down and he looks like he's having a very comfortable nap. In fact, this is so well designed. If you want to, you can also leave Master Wu's hat on while he's in bed. So what does Master Wu keep inside his room? Well, there's some really interesting stuff. There's a pair of golden scythes, a large black sword, which looks more suited to a pirate ship. And then there's strange looking staff with a skull on top. That definitely warrants a closer look and here it is. I don't recognize this, but I'm sure it's been used before in other Ninjago sets. And that is a very cool staff indeed. Over in the other corner, we've got a piece of ceremonial snake headgear. I found a willing volunteer to help me demonstrate this. And as you can see, Lloyd is wearing the mask. And that is a super, super good rendition of a snake headpiece. Wu also has some writing implements, including a pen and a printed envelope piece. And on the other wall, Wu has a desk which contains a picture of the gang and a helmet that looks suspiciously like something that Garmadon would wear. Also conveniently, if Wu needs to go take a bathroom break in the middle of the night, the bathroom is right next door. Although headroom is a bit of a problem. There you go, Wu. So I hope you enjoyed that comprehensive tour of Destiny's Bounty. But before we wrap up, there's a few ninja friends we need to take a closer look at. An impressive ship deserves an impressive crew, and Destiny's Bounty does not disappoint. We've got all six of the ninjas and Sensei Wu. According to the good people at Brickset.com, Sensei Wu is the only exclusive minifigure here. I've got to say he looks the same as other Sensei Wu minifigures in my collection, so we'll definitely be taking a closer look at him to see what's different. The Zane figure seems to be the most common, and he appears in five different sets. It's really nice that we get all six of the gang in their Spinjitsu uniforms, complete with their signature weaponry. We're going to take a close-up look at each one of these minifigures, and then wrap up the review. Cole is the elemental master of Earth and comes with his signature hammer weapon. This is made up from four different Lego elements and it's really simple to put together. You could make this from your own parts. He is a really nice minifigure, loads of metallic gold printing. And this particular version also appears in the Quake Mech. He appears in two different sets in this exact format. As you can see at the front here, lots of metallic printing. And also we've got some metallic printing on the cuffs there. That's how we differentiate this version of Cole from other versions in other sets. Flipping him over to the back, we've got his dojo symbol there on the back with the gold metallic printing. And then he's got the two piece headgear that all of the ninjas have. Uh, I'm not gonna take this bottom bit off, but you can see he's got the uh, kind of ferocious expression on the front there. And then when we turn that around, we've got the smiley face on the back. So a really nice coal minifig to start off our roundup of minifigs from the Destiny's Bounty. Next up, we've got Kai, who is Nia's older brother. He's the elemental master and ninja of fire. And we've got this glorious red uniform here. A little bit of red printing there on the legs. And uh, we've also got some really nice metallic printing there at the collar for his kind of undershirt, I guess. One of the things I really like about this minifigure, which actually appears in five sets, is this katana holder. We've got a pair of katanas in this special holster on the back there. And trust me, there is a dojo logo printed under there. I'm not going to take it off because, hey, this video is probably long enough already. Having a look underneath the headgear, we've got the really mean expression. And I can see there he's got a bandage over his eye. And then if we turn that around, we should have a smiley face on the back. And... Yeah, he's got kind of a, a goofy smile there, uh, but that is the wonderful Kai. Let's just put him back together. And uh, yeah, really nice minifigure, not an exclusive, uh, but that's Kai, the elemental master of fire. This is Nia, she is Kai's younger sister and the elemental master of water. She comes with her signature weapon here, which is the tasseled spear, quite a simple weapon with the spearhead, the shaft, and then this really nice tasseled element on the end there in the black color, which is super cool. Uh, as is her printing here. I really like the printing on this Nia minifig. Uh, really nice silver lapels on her kimono here with some little Japanese markings there. Again, I have no idea what that says, but uh, they either do or don't mean something. Uh, she's quite a rare minifigure. She only appears in two sets in this kind of skirted format. A little bit of printing there on the feet for the sandals. And if we flip her over, we've got more metallic printing on the back there for the dojo symbol. And then the little bit of printing here on the elbows for a bit of protection. On the headgear here, we've got a little blue printing and let's take a look at that face. We've got the two piece headgear and this is her serious expression. And then if we turn it around again, I'd expect to see a smile. 
And yeah, that's not really much of a smile near. I'm sure she could do better than that, but uh, nonetheless, really nice minifigure. Great to get her in a Destiny's Bounty in full ninjutsu gear. And that's Nia. Here's the only exclusive minifigure from Destiny's Bounty. This is Master or Sensei Wu, and he is, of course, the younger brother of Garmadon, the evil guy. He is carrying this very basic weapon here, which is a brown staff, and that is a basic Lego element. It's nothing special. Now, before we move on, let's just address the issue of exclusivity, because I don't know about you, but this guy looks very, very similar. This is the Sensei Wu from the Green Ninja Mech Dragon, and the only difference I can see here is the facial expression. So I think we really are looking at those facial expressions being the only differentiator. I'm gonna take that weapon out of the way for just a moment, and we can focus on the printing here. So really nice printing on the front of his uniform, which continues down onto this printed fabric kind of skirt piece here for his robes. And then we've got some more printing on the legs. We've got the printing here for the sandals on the front of the feet. And he's got this awesome oriental beard and conical shaped hat. So I'm gonna take that out of the way for just a second. And we're gonna give Wu a little shave so we can take a look at that expression. And that is, yeah, I've got, I've got to say that does look different. And Wu, you do look a lot better when you've had a shave. Uh, that is awesome. I really like that uh, print there. It is, of course, only one print on the face. Uh, we don't have another one on the back there because it would show up because of the hat. And then on the back there, we've got the symbol for Wu, uh, which also appears on the sale of the Destiny's Bounty. So here's a really nice, clean shaven Wu minifigure. Next, we've got the Green Ninja, the Elemental Master of Energy, and Wu's nephew, Lloyd. Oh, yeah, I like to call him Lloyd. Obviously, his name is Lloyd, and he seems to be uh, probably the most popular ninja out there. I always see lots of comments on my videos when Lloyd shows up. Um, really nice minifigure. I love Lloyd's weapon here. A really nice sword, and then he's got this golden tassel piece on the end there. So we've got his custom tasseled sword weapon, and then... Yeah, basically a repeat of the Lloyds we've seen in some of the other sets. I've uh, got the printed legs there with the green detailing. Really nice uh, kimono top here with some gold metallic printing. And if we flip him over, we've got the same green logo printed on the back. And then we've got the two-piece headgear. Really like the metallic printing on the headband there. And then you can see Lloyd's signature green eyes. I'm gonna just spin around the mask so we can take a look at his aggressive expression first. There we go, he looks really mean. And then uh, we'll turn his face around. And I think he's got kind of a dopey grin, this Lloyd. Um, yeah, that face is kind of odd, uh, for want of a better word. But it is Lloyd, he's ever popular. And that is our green ninja, Le Lloyd. This blue-eyed chap is Zane the Ice Ninja. He's also the world's first ninjoid, so he's not really human. To me, he looks a little bit like a ninja stormtrooper, but uh, yeah, I think he's quite a fun character. He comes with his signature weapon, the bow and arrow, and then around the back, we've got a bunch of arrows in a quiver, which sits around his neck there. You can also see we've got some more printing on the back there. I'm not gonna remove the quiver, but you get the idea. Uh, around the front, we've got some more printing on the leg and then some really nice printing on the torso with some metallics. We've got a kind of walkie-talkie here, maybe some kind of battery pack, and then you can see his uh, ninjutsu kimono beneath. Uh, we've got the two-piece headgear as they all have, and underneath you can see those blue eyes poking through and his mean expression. We then turn that around. Uh, we've got his crazy nindroid kind of non-human smile that's a uh, that's way too smiley for uh, my liking but uh, he's a really nice minifigure so we'll forgive Zane for that big smile and that is Zane the Ice Ninja and finally we've got the elemental master of lightning Jay He's also called Jay Walker, which I think is immensely funny. He's got his flail weapon here, which is a stick with a chain and a kind of horn piece on the end there. Really basic weapon, and uh, you definitely don't want to hit yourself in the head when you're flailing that around. Really nice printing, as with all of these minifigures. We've got some detailing there on the legs with some brown kind of strapping around the knees. And then no metallics on the torso, but we do have a couple of pouches there in a strap. Uh, we have no, no arm printing there, difficult to see through the viewfinder. And then we've got a little bit more printing around the back where you can see the strap from the pouches on the front going all the way around. 
Uh, we've got the two-piece headgear again, with a little blue headband on there. And you can see he's kind of a, I don't think Jay can really have a mean face with those freckles. Uh, he's kind of a young looking ninja, uh, but really nice facial expression there. And if I can get him to turn around, I think we've got a kind of goofy smile on the back there, which is always good to see. Uh, yeah, I really like that facial expression, especially with those freckles. And that is the awesome Jay Walker, the elemental master of lightning. So that was set number 70618, Destiny's Bounty from the Ninjago movie. This one has definitely been a long time coming, but I'm so glad I got this. When you've collected all of the Ninjago movie sets, the minifigures get a little bit boring, but Destiny's Bounty is a magnificent Lego ship. There are some very cool build techniques and some awesome elements in this set. One of my favourite parts has to be the two dragon heads at the front of the ship, but I also like the fact that this is modular and there's lots to see inside. This set is getting a little bit old and with the Lego Movie 2 coming out in February next year, you can guarantee Lego are going to have to clear some shelf space soon for the new Lego Movie 2 sets. I don't think this is terrible value at the original MSRP of $160, but there's a good chance you're going to be able to buy this at a discount like I did at Toys R Us. If you do manage to find this on sale, it's a great 2300 piece set to own. I really hope you enjoyed this Destiny's Bounty unboxing, speed build and review video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like down below and subscribe to my channel for new LEGO review videos twice every week. Thanks a million to you for checking out today's review and thanks also to those people who suggested that I review this on my channel. Until next time, stay safe, have a great day and we'll see you on the next unboxing, speed build and review video.